I'm Blatchford. I'm, I'm also a novelist um, and a critic. Um, I've got a problem with this particular book because it's very difficult to give you a proper flavour of it without giving too much away. It's one of those books that really does have um, a lot in it. Um, it's set 60 years into the future and um, we were looking for a, um, a, a suitable description of that really. We couldn't come up with one. But it's a form of future fiction. Um, unfortunately, we've got the author with us who can tell you far more about it than I can. So all I propose to do is to ask Ken a few questions about the general side of the book and I'm going to try not to let too much out because there's a lot in it that needs to be kept under wraps until you read the book. And that's not because I'm trying to sell the book. It is simply that I, I want people to understand just how many layers there are in the book. It's one of the best written books that I've read for quite a long time, and I, I genuinely mean that. So it's easy for me to talk about it. It's better for Ken to talk about it because he wrote it. So I'm going to start off just by asking him some questions. And when we've uh, run through that, I never stick to a script, although I bought one. Uh, but when we run through it, we'll just ask for some questions from the floor. And any, any questions you've got, you can ask Ken, and he'll do his best to also keep the answers quite hooded and clouded, because otherwise you won't enjoy the book as much as you should. The first thing I wanted to know, Ken, and, and um, I remember us talking about this when we, when we thought, what, what can we call this genre, if you like, and um, future fiction was the best that we could come up with. Um, and I know you wanted to say a bit about the style of the book and, and what you decided to, how you decided to write the book in the, in the fashion that you did, so I'll pass it across to you. Fine, thank you very much, Guy. Uh, <coughs> before I launch into answering that though, can you all hear all right? A little bit, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll try to project. <laughs> Timber in the voice. We're surrounded <laughs> on all sides here. It's like the Wild West, we've got people on this side now. Um, but, and also, before I forget to say thank you very much for coming, just in case I forget to say that at the end. Uh, I'm very pleased to see you all here. Um, Di asked me about the uh, style of book, or the genre of book, that I wanted to write. And basically, I wanted to write a book for myself. It's my first novel, uh, and I just sat down and wrote it in chronological order, without developing big notes about characters and uh, without thinking too much about the structure. I just really wanted to get a story that was in the sort of book that I would like to read or perhaps would have read a few years ago. Uh, someone asked me just before we started all this about whether it had um, a dismal ending and uh, said you didn't like that kind of book. And Basically, uh, I wanted to write a story set in the future which follows um, a great uh, pandemic and therefore uh, a great tragedy. The population of Britain is only a few million. But I also wanted to write a book which was not um, a pessimistic, completely dystopian picture of the future. So although it ends with a note of tragedy, there's also a glimmer of hope. And I think that's really making a bit of a distinction between the uh, purely dystopian sort of novels that you read. Uh, and also you can find novels which are, um, to call them post-apocalypse would be wrong really, because if there is an apocalypse, that means there is the, that's the end of civilization. Uh, and I'm, it's not that kind of book. Uh, civilization is going to continue in a way, but uh, in a much reduced way. So um, it's not the kind of book that leaves you with that rather depressed feeling that perhaps, say, 1984, George Orwell's 1984 would. Um, and I'll say a bit more about the ending uh, but without giving away the actual plot uh, a bit later. But I hope that answers the... Yes, of course, yeah, yeah it does. Um, the, the other thing I was, I was going to say, Ken, is um, the difficulty of, of putting a book together which entertains as well as contains a message. Um, that's a difficult thing to do. Other, you know, if, you, if you go too far one way, you get a polemic, and this is how bad everything can be and the rest of it. Um, but what you've done is to actually write a fast-paced book which has got elements of thriller in it, and it has got elements of thriller in it. You never quite know what's going to happen next. 
There are also love affairs that run through it, which are really convincing love affairs. Um, so there's all sorts of things happening below the surface of the major thing, which is effectively what would happen if we didn't have all our gadgets and if you didn't have what everybody's carrying around in here, I'll bet you uh, uh, an iPhone of some description, an intelligent phone, and we didn't have the internet, how would we cope? Could we cope? We always seem to cope, whatever happens. But if there's smaller numbers, it's going to be more difficult. So really what I want to know is how do you combine the entertainment with some form of message for the future? Yeah, yeah you're quite right. What I aim to do is to write a fairly uh, fast-moving story. So it's a kind of like a, a hard, uh, shiny surface that the reader can whiz along. Um, and I'm hoping that the messages will be spotted underneath. So it's, it's not one of those books which you might call literary fiction, which um, are full of pregnant with meaning, but not very much happening. Uh, there's a lot happening in this story, so I'm hoping it will be a page turner for you when you look at it. Uh, but I also do hope that um, gradually you'll come to understand this new world or this different world. Uh, the kind of feeling I wanted to get was really drawn on some of my experiences of living uh, and visiting uh, developing countries such as India and various parts of Africa where you get the feeling that you're living in more than one century at once, perhaps even four centuries. You're living, you know, almost in a medieval moment at one point when you see someone in a loincloth off to work in the fields. And then the next, you're watching somebody with their iPad, uh, and, and so on. And the world I've sketched is really um, that kind of world. In other words, there are remnants of today's world. There are still a few cranky little computers. There are still a few cars that, of course, have had to be decomputerized to run. And there are a few luxuries, like coffee. Uh, which is highly prized, you know, and uh, so forth. But um, really, I suppose what I'm talking about is a new Middle Ages, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about that, in, perhaps it, it, it can fit into a future point, but I've noticed that there, that there are other books, there's a kind of new genre emerging about the future, where we're imagining a world which is like a, a, a new Middle Ages, in other words, a fairly static world. Uh, and we're beginning in this world now to give up on the idea of progress. But I'll say a bit more about that in a moment, perhaps it might fit into some other discussion.